Welcome to the Influence Factory podcast. This program is dedicated to support professionals who have a desire to develop their digital business influence so they can navigate through a fast-paced, constantly growing digital world. We invite newcomers as well as our family of business influencers to a place to play, share ideas, questions, tips, and guidance with other thought leaders around the globe. Sit back and enjoy our program with our host, Dean Delisle, as he interviews guests. News and commentary is provided by Kate Hassett and Jackson Delisle. Power Move lessons are provided by the Influencer Marketing Department at Social Jack. And production, editing, and distribution is provided by the Social Jack production team. All right. So uh, coming up, we have an amazing special guest and a good friend of mine, uh, Richard Hollis. He's accumulated 30 years of CEO experience. Uh, he's an accomplished and experienced American business leader, has maintained a long-held vision of producing value through delivering breakthrough product uh, products that are disruptive. I love the disruptive part. Create extra, extraordinary user experiences and result in market leader positions He's been a part of three M&A and conducted two IPOs, uh, and Helanis is uh, in his uh, six, uh, with Helanis, he's in his six early startup, uh, stage startup company. So Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you very much, Dean, and really a pleasure to share some time with you. Yeah, and um, you know, it's uh, interesting, and uh, how, is, uh, how is San Diego today? Because you're in San Diego. Yeah, well, it's one of those months where we're transitioning spring to summer, so we have a little bit of a marine layer, and uh, it's kind of cloudy, but I'm looking forward to blue skies and, and, and balmy winds here in a few months. There you go. There you go. So, um, so, uh, so uh, coming along in, uh, in life, I always found it interesting. You and I always go back to the coaching element and how important it is, and uh, you started out um, as a basketball coach, right, in, in coaching? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, in my early days, um, uh, I ran a boys club. That was before it became a boys and girls club. That was back in the 70s. And so I became an athletic director and coached multiple sports. But the main sport that I was coaching was basketball. And when I reflect back on my past, uh, I never really realized that I was developing uh, leadership skills uh, by being a coach and how that would transform the way I interact with people and eventually evolved into a CEO where um, we're basically uh, just coaches just on a different format rather than on a basketball court. It's a, a global marketplace, if you will. Yeah, for sure. And one thing that's not listed in here, as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, martial arts. And then you were in the boxing uh, for a while. So where did that come in? Well, that's an interesting story, but uh, <laughs> I started attending a boys club when I was six, seven years old, and uh, someone said, hey, you should join the boxing team. <laughs> so uh, I put on a pair of gloves, and the next thing you know, I have a coach telling me, hey, you, you're, you're pretty good at this. You, you know, why don't you join the team? And so I ended up joining a team, and uh, that kind of got me introduced to sports in general, but um, boxing specifically. But when I look back on it, uh, I question a lot of the things I did when I was younger, but <laughs> in the stream of things. And it's not like you chose it, but almost like it chose you. Yeah, right, for sure. And um, it's interesting, when I attended um, your board meeting earlier this year, you had made reference to, um, uh, I want to say at least six or seven books. Maybe it was even more. And then I found out how many books you read as I see all the books behind you on the bookshelf. And uh, I just want to say what an honor it was that that you read my first book. And, and I have your quote here on the back. And what's interesting about that is... Uh, is number one, how fast you read it uh, and how fast you read, uh, but also how much you absorb uh, out of these books and seems like you put into action, uh, I want to say almost immediately. So has this been a passion of yours in, in reading and applying your whole life? Did this start early on? Yeah, well, thank you for asking that. Once again, it became one of those situations that was unplanned. So when I was in high school, I really concentrated on sports a lot, and, and, and basketball um, was one of the key sports. I played varsity basketball in high school, and that's how I eventually ended up 
uh, coaching. Uh, but um, I was studious, but I wasn't overly studious. Uh, so it wasn't where I was reading that prolifically when I was younger um, until I got into college. And then I realized uh, when I was in college, I was behind. And um, it was a little bit of uh, uh, insecurity about, wow, I should have focused a little more on my education. And now I'm in college and I can see there's some very bright minds here. And so as I started taking my courses, I started to actually fall in love with learning. And I realized that, wow, you know, I never had some of this prior knowledge before. And you're not born with it. you got to go out and get it. And uh, I read the, the 500 greatest books of all time in humanities. And I took a humanities course, which was a, a two-year course. And so I read all the humanities, starting with Homer all the way up to modern times, Sigmund Freud, the, the whole gamut of the 500 greatest works of man. And so I fell in love with knowledge, and knowledge gave me a sense of self-confidence and self-esteem, and that I could learn things, and I can apply the things I learn. And so when I got out of college and got into the business world, I also realized I was lacking a lot of knowledge. <laughs> so curiosity um, and uh, desire to be good at something means that you have to apply yourself. And applying yourself means you have to have some discipline. But when you become good at something, you start to really enjoy it. So I became good at dissecting a book, opening a book, you know, reading uh, cover to cover, reading the index, the table of context, context. And then looking at, you know, the chapters, going through all the chapters, and then starting all over and reading, and then grabbing concepts. And, and I, I learned how to digest the book. And so I figured I could read a normal book in maybe four to eight hours. And maybe if it's a, a, a much more comprehensive or complex book, it may take me several days to a week. But I was disciplined enough to get through a book. I, I never wanted to start a book and not finish it, and then it sits on the bookshelf. I wanted to read it. So yes, I, I'm a prolific reader, and I've continued since my 20s. So here I am several decades later, and this is a habit that is really a lifestyle of mine. I consider it a hobby, I consider it fun, and I consider it empowering. Yeah, that's awesome. And you made me think I'm a, I'm a big time chunker, you know, that's, that's my methodology in life. And people are like, my gosh, how do you get so much done in a week and things like that? And I time chunk. And for me, uh, you've, you've got me now thinking, well, heck, you just define time chunking as it applies to reading a book. And, and now, now I'm thinking, okay, well, I could, I could actually time chunk and do that myself. So thank you for the inspiration on that and a little bit of a mind shift in such a short period of time. So um, now um, you started out in, in the biotech space and, and, you know, many of us have never rung the bell uh, on, uh, on the stock exchange floor. Can you give us a little bit of sense of, of, of what it was like in the biotech days and, and part of that journey? And then we'll transition to the new influencer platform that you have today. But I'm, I'm really fascinated about how did you get how did you get into biotech and then and then the way that you took it and then just take us through that journey a little bit, if you could. No, thank you very much, and uh, it's really a privilege to be able to share all this with your audience, so thank you. Yeah. You know, as I take you through this for a few minutes, um, I'll start out with saying that um, as your life evolves, you start to see that all things are connected, which is really kind of strange because we're living in a connected world today. Right. All things connect, whether it's biotech, infotech, nanotech, fintech, these things all connect. So uh, I got started in the, the pharmaceutical biotech world because when I graduated from college, um, I turned my attention from being a collegiate uh, basketball coach and professor, which was really what I wanted to do, but I had a lot of bills to pay. <laughs> so I, right. <laughs> and I ended up becoming a pharmaceutical specialist representative uh, working for a very large company right there in Chicago. Uh, Baxter Healthcare, I worked in the Baxter Travanol division, uh, where that division uh, specialized in IV, IV delivery systems. So what that exposed me to was hospitals and nursing homes. And 
business and pharmaceuticals and the role that companies play in society as a whole. Uh, but what it really did to me as a young man in his 20s, it exposed me to death, disease, dying, health care, and it really struck me uh, to see children with cancer or people suffering in a hospital or people aging in nursing homes. And so as a young man, it had a, a, a really profound impact on me that I'm going to get sick someday and I'm also going to die someday. <laughs> so that created a lot of curiosity within myself of how do we age? Why do we age? How is the body coded? Here's where things connect. And I uh, uh, really uh, grew a passion for business and healthcare. And uh, I, once again, it wasn't actually planned. These things just kind of inadvertently happen. And then once they happen, then it, it started to be planned out a little more because I created a vision and, and I knew where I wanted to go. So how this kind of leads up to, you know, my passions, it's, it's the first passion was really healthcare. And so I worked my way through the ranks, salesman, uh, sales manager, uh, a marketing manager, uh, a division manager, a national sales manager, a vice president of marketing, vice president of marketing and sales, chief operating officer. So in these decades was a lot of learning and a lot of growth and a lot of progress. And I got to be exposed to a lot of people, a lot of um, challenges about being an entrepreneur, uh, exposed to inventors, uh, the risk that an entrepreneur takes, uh, how do you influence society, all these types of things. So the long story short, uh, uh, rapidly going through my career, I ended up at one of the most incredible companies in the Bay Area uh, in the uh, uh, 80s and 90s, and that was a company called Genentech, and it was the world's first uh, biotechnology company. Uh, Dana, what's really cool is uh, DNA is code, code for life. Right. And I got very involved, and then I started my own company, biotech company, and I took that public, and I was fortunate enough to you know, uh, ring the NASDAQ with uh, the former mayor of New York at the time, which was uh, Giuliani. And so that was uh, during the 96-97 uh, uh, time frame. And then uh, developing the company where I'm actually ringing the bell with Giuliani was around 2001, 2002. And so I took that company public and it was all related to diseases of aging. We had 12 drugs in the clinic. Um, I was a founder, CEO, chairman of that company and ran it for nearly uh, 17 years. And then the economy took a dip in 2008-9, as everyone knows, and uh, I had to do a, a, a re-pivot. But all along, I was looking at the digital revolution as much as I was uh, involved in the biotech revolution. And I started to see really the impact uh, that um, uh, the internet was gonna have on um, online. Everything was going to move from radio, print, TV to, to digital. So we're moving into a digital world. So when the recession hit, I basically did a re-pivot into the digital space because I've raised two millennials and they wanted me to look at the internet. So uh, that brings us to current. And that is, uh, I've spent the last 10 years doing a lot of research on the internet and trying to understand the role it's gonna play in the future, especially for millennials and Gen Zers, as uh, jobs get more and more uh, automated. Uh, it's been uh, stated that 80 to 90% of the jobs in the next decade or two are gonna give way to automation. So what does this mean for job creation? What does this mean for the next generation? And what I was able to determine uh, that the end game is really gonna be about uh, uh, millennials and Gen Zers and their opportunity to monetize technology on the internet. And so that was really the beginnings of Polonis. And Polonis is really about connecting all the component parts of the internet into a whole space to simplify the complexity of trying to um, uh, have a personal profile or a personal brand on the internet. It's very interesting uh, listening to your uh, opening because she started talking about so many different parts, but all the companies and aspects you have to go through to just get analytics 
let alone right. other social media platforms. So that's a lot of fragmentation, and it's tough to make sense of all that. So we came with the term holon, which connects all the parts to the whole. Right, and and I love when um, when I was at the uh, board meeting there, and you had a diagram and showed the the evolution of uh, you know the the whole of ourself connected to the whole when it becomes community. Do you remember that? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you assembled that. <laughs> it was very biotech like, and I and that's when I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't know I could understand biotech, but now I understand how things are connected. It's, you know, I was a network engineer and a network scientist from a people perspective, and I saw the commonalities of computers connecting and people connecting. And, and, and now all of a sudden, since I've met you, I'm like, oh my gosh, our bodies are connected to be connected. You know, they're developed to be connected. Yes, it's what you call uh, systems thinking. Right. So your body is a complex adaptive system. And it almost sounds oxymoronic, but the internet is very much biomimicry from the standpoint it has many component parts and how is it coded together to be one. And code is code. The DNA is code for life. It's carbon code. Um, right. It's digital code. But you have a lot of component parts and a lot of systems. So in the human body, we have all these different systems, your neurological system, your metabolic and endocrine system, your musculoskeletal system. There's so many component parts to us, but they all are connected and work seamlessly as one to create us, which is basically a holonic or holistic approach to looking at the internet of how does social media connect with commerce and with data and connectivity and networking, being data-driven. All these things are component parts, and what they need to do is to be integrated into a whole so that they speak to one another, but they all make sense into a cohesive strategy. The most difficult thing about being an influencer on the internet, and especially moving into the future, is how do you build that personal brand and make it a cohesive whole? How can right. you be omnipresent, but do it from one place, but also be able to be ubiquitous and be in all places at one time? So that gets very complex. Sure so how it does. Do how do you simplify all that complexity? And so it was Steve Jobs that basically said, uh, simplicity is complexity resolved. So what we're trying to do at Holana is to simplify the process of having a digital presence on the internet. Yeah, and what's interesting about that is, you know, we talk a lot about um, uh, the fact that uh, we track that every, I would say, uh, within every 15 seconds, there's a new release of one of the top, even just uh, 25 social platforms. There's a new release and we have to keep up with that. And then if you count all the mobile apps, uh, I don't know what, um, I'm sort of curious to the audience, but how many average mobile apps do we have? And how many are already ob obsolete from what you've loaded on your phone to what you have? So we're in this very interesting dynamic where there's so much tech and so much, so many options. It's almost like, I don't, sometimes I don't even know where to find my friends. Do I run to LinkedIn? Do I run to Facebook? Do I run to social media? And it's like we forget to really be just connected, to do some face-to-face -face things or, or get some time together. So, so coming from a traditional business world like myself, um, what are some of the, the opportunities and risks that you see as, as things evolve from, from being... Um, you know, uh, just used to like, uh, I'm going to call Richard at home and he's got to pick up the phone and I have to get him or he's got to listen on his, on his answering machine so we can have a time to get together and really connect. And now we're so connected. It's almost like, you don't know, should I text somebody? Should I call somebody? Should I direct message them? <laughs> so, so, so what do you see like based on where we're at to where, where we're going with all this? You know, that's such an excellent question. Uh, because that centers around the word discernment. You have to discern uh, how to use your time and uh, what, what components of the internet are you actually using that maximizes your value. Uh, right. Number one, you know, the, the beauty of the internet is that it allows you to have reach. And it used to be word of mouth, 
but word of mouth was kind of restricted to your your tribe <laughs> that <laughs> in a, a geographical uh, 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 place where right. a it's word of web. So word of web is unlimited. Right. And the ability to touch so many people, and it's the old uh, commercial reach out and touch someone, where you can reach out and touch someone on the internet. And what I find um, very um, interesting, especially for someone of my experience and age, uh, is really understanding the true value of uh, the internet and how you can touch other people's lives uh, by having reach. So some people you're going to be able to reach virtually, but if you're really communicating in a, in a, a real good human way, you can make a connection online that's rather profound. You can inspire people. Uh, a lot of things can happen. Then you have this closer uh, relationship with family and friends that you need to spend time with, whether you call or whether you text. And so these are things that you have to have some judgment and call on where you use your time. The one thing I've kind of defined it down to is when something's really, really important, you make time for it. And right. Good call. In person. Yeah. And nothing is going to be in person because that's where, you know, you really touch someone. But I believe yeah. the ability to have influence and reach uh, gives one an incredible amount of influence and an incredible amount of power if they're producing valuable, meaningful content or relationships. So I think the value of who you are, your personal brand, how authentic you are, how trustworthy you are, those things develop relationships, whether it's virtual or physical. Yeah, that's that's a good call. Um, you know, and as as you were talking about that, and you understand a lot of uh, my methodologies from just getting to know me and reading the book. And you and I have had uh, conversations about the fact that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't through. Uh, I think you just called it our tribe. You know, the people that. Um, that have been there with us, uh, and I'll say sometimes through thick and thin or on the journey, on the adventure. Um, and, and we call that social teaming. But um, you mentioned, uh, which I think is profound, we talk about this and people think that it's such a stretch. And, and, and this is part of what I teach in grad schools, but it's like, if you are all of a sudden, you're, you know, you're, you know, I grew up working in a town where everybody worked at a factory in a steel mill, and then all of a sudden the steel business went away and everybody was just out of work and they were devastated and they had an, an issue pivoting. And, and you've just had a significant pivot, even though, you know, we can draw a connection to it. But man, going from biotech to digital is like... It is like, a, to me, a monumental pivot. So I'm curious, when you were going through that, um, you know, what did your, you know, your network went from biotech and now it's, it's digital, but you've kept some common connections. Can you just speak to that transition of yourself and what you went through in that? And maybe some of the people that have been a key element of that journey. Well, Dean, you know, I love these questions and uh, they're very rarely, uh, asked of me. So the opportunity to communicate with you and the audience, um, some of this knowledge and to share it, profounds me. So thank you. That's such a great question. So when you look at uh, the world at large, uh, everything's connected. It's, it's a very strange thing, <laughs> but I don't want to get esoteric, but even looking um, at a physics, how physics is connected to chemistry. Chemistry is connected to biology. Biology evolves us. Then here we are as a human species or a life form. You have to interact with your environment and you have nature that is doing certain things and it, it's evolution. But then all of a sudden uh, uh, we come down through the trees and we're homo erectus. And then all of a sudden uh, we create fire and we create tools and we communicate with hieroglyphics. And now we are storytellers and we are tool makers and we are evolving. And so storytelling and tool makers here in the 21st century 
We're doing the same thing over millennia. It's just that it's new technology. And when paper came along, paper allowed us to communicate because we can write books and more people can share knowledge. And then we had the Gutenberg Press and we're, we're got, we can duplicate books and we can distribute books and all of a sudden knowledge is everywhere. It's evolution, it's beautiful, it's information. Um, and now, skip forward to the 21st century, we're in the information digital age. Everything connects. It's all about evolution and what are we evolving to. And so are we evolving to a better human species? Uh, is artificial intelligence going to be empowering or is it going to be evil? Is it going to be used for good or bad? And so we're evolving and we're learning as we go to a degree. And so I'm just one of those in individuals that believes technology and evolution go hand in hand and these things connect. And we need a leadership to use technology in a proper way, a good governance, uh, looking at social inclusion, um, economic and environmental sustainability, uh, providing people opportunities. You know, it's a crazy thing, but the internet through evolution and technology enables all these things. So the things that you're doing, like writing your book and teaching people how to build uh, personal brands and developing a technology cars where people are empowered to do things on the internet, create jobs, create income for themselves. Uh, these things are all connected. It's just that you have to spend a lot of time connecting the dots, and not everyone has that kind of time. So I believe it's our corporation's responsibility to connect all those dots and make it easy so you don't have to figure all this stuff out because you have a limited amount of time. So the, what we're trying to do at Holonis is provide you uh, technology that allows you to connect, uh, network, uh, build a personal brand, monetize your digital assets, and create a living through your passions. Because I think where the job market's going to go in the future is not working for one company like you're talking about in a factory or a warehouse for 30 years and you either get a gold watch or get fired because you're too old. I think we're moving into an economy where you can take control of yourself build your digital brand, monetize, and no matter what age you are, you can connect with people and offer value. So we're moving to, uh, uh, I think, an age in the 21st century where it's not so much about a job as much as it's about what is your passion and how good are you at that passion and can you offer value to others through a product or a service. And now your passion becomes your career and you can brand that on the internet through basically personal branding. So all these things, as odd and as strange as it seems, everything connects. Yeah, that's uh, that's so true. And um, just going back real quick, the um, you know just just to the people side of it, as you're as you're playing through this, you know, even myself and and some of the audiences chiming in too, on on people along that journey that makes sense to to make sure that we don't operate alone. Because I think with all this technology and all these things, and especially for entrepreneurs, um, it's, it's a lonely journey because we feel like we have to, we have to, you know, a lot of times make sure that we hold our, our the things that drive us as secrets until we feel compelled enough to, to release them to the world. And some people stay bottled up and they never release them to the world. And one thing that you've done on Holonis that I like is you've given me a, a holo space and a place to, and, a, and the ability to have uh, a website when I don't need a web developer to actually build that site out. I can just, you know, have a space on the internet that's mine that tells my story and who I am and everything about me. So how did you get to, to that part? Like, you know what? I don't think everybody needs to have a www, their own website, and not everybody's going to get to that point. Um, but but you, you've come to a point now where, my gosh, you've, got, you've given people a way to actually build not just a website, but a whole social community around that website and then connect to everything else. How did you get to, to like decide that? that? That's fascinating. Yeah, because I was looking at the Internet as a system. Uh, I think the majority of people that are starting a business, they're looking at a niche and something that can do uh, really good in that niche. I was looking at the whole. And so um, over a decade of experience, I've talked to literally hundreds, if not thousands of people on the internet, um, entrepreneurs building websites. You know, in the early days, it was all about a website. And 
uh, there wasn't that much competition. And you can, if you, if you knew what you were doing, you can get a website and start driving some traffic and monetize it. Well, there are over 2 billion uh, uh, websites on the internet today, and it's a lot more. So, Isn't it just staggering to even think about, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so how, how do you get found? Uh, you know, so you have to be an es- expert at search engine optimization. You have to create great content that uh, basically um, informs people of what you're offering. Uh, so you, you need a, a web designer, an SEO person, a graphics designer, you know, a blog expert. Uh, you need someone to set up, set up your shopping cart if you want to sell stuff. And then you got to try to figure out your analytics and put all this together. Well, that's out of the reach for the majority of people. It's out of reach. Right. So the, the biggest pain point is how do you develop a complete digital presence on the Internet and be able to have a voice and a platform to express your brand and how do you monetize that. And for most people, that's a very daunting challenge. And it is for actually probably anyone. And you have to spend a lot of money and you have to spend a lot of countless days and hours trying to figure out how to make all this work. Well, if you can create some type of standard way of doing it that democratizes the internet and enables everyone to have access to a full digital presence. That's the concept behind Colonus. Because it, we're not saying you shouldn't have a website or you shouldn't have all of your other social media uh, platforms. Colonus is an open collaborative platform and it's not about either or, it's about, and you can connect your website to your whole space and you connect all your distribution channels, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you can connect everything right to your home page where it becomes your home base, where it basically aggregates all your digital assets in one place. And you can create content on Holonis and distribute it to all your platforms. So we're not about trying to compete, we're about collaboration. We're not trying to wall you in, liberate you. We believe you should be ubiquitous and you you can be free to travel anywhere you want on the internet and you don't even need a passport. You know, you can go anywhere in the world uh, with the internet. And you can have a global presence. Um, but how do you do all this? And how do you start it? And what are the pain points? So we're all about simplifying those pain points and enabling people to create a personal brand and monetize it. And what we're going to get better and better at since, you know, we're just uh, launching here. We've been live for about a year and a half, but we haven't pressed all the buttons. But we're pressing all the buttons now. We're going to create more and more creative ways where an individual can monetize their digital presence and, and be able to do something that I think is an internet dream, and that is enable people to make money doing all things social. So all the time you spend doing things on the internet to incentivize you to be able to create better content and make money out of doing it is really what our passion is. It's, 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 it's to enable people to have that voice you're talking about, to build that brand. And so when you think about all this, if some company can simplify all that, how it can standardize the way it opens it up to the masses to be able to exploit the internet, that would be remarkable. And, and that is our vision. Yeah, and that's, um, I think that's, that's where you and I really hit it off, um, is the fact that, you know, and I've told you this before, and I just, I just was uh, covered on a, a news story about this, and then I came back to your, you and your team, and I, and I had this epiphany that I go, I go, man, I said, you know, if I think about it, all the different platforms, and we're usually hovering between the top dozen platforms out there with our clients and, and our businesses and brands and influencers, and I'm like, you know, these brands are, ha- it's, it takes every ounce of their fiber to just keep up with their technology and then giving people guidance to make sure they can find the new buttons and the new technology that they create. You know, it's like, who moved my cheese? Every time you log in like to a LinkedIn or a Facebook, they've moved something. You know, we were at a conference last week and everybody held up and go, oh, look, the new Facebook is out. You know, it just happened to pop up on everybody's screen at the conference. And I was like, yeah, did we get any warning about that? Now, where did they move this? You know, and so we've got this incredible, you know, world that people think they're making it easier for us. And yet they're they're. It's almost like they're making it complex. And one thing you and I, I believe, have in common 
is that we care about the well-being of the influencer, whether it's a business influencer or it's a, it's a you know, public, uh, you know, macro, micro, nano influencer, doesn't matter. It's, it's like there aren't enough people taking care and guiding the influencer down a good, uh, safe, profitable path. Can you just speak to that for a minute? Just, just your feeling and beliefs about that? Yeah, so... When something is uh, complex, that means there's many moving parts and things are going to change. Like you just indicated, you're at a conference, hey, if something changed, right. what changed is an algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so we're moving into the age of acceleration and algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so you are either going to be the victim of an algorithm <laughs> or empowered by an algorithm. <laughs> So we know what happened in 2017 and 2018 was a social media apocalypse where all of a sudden accounts by the millions <clears throat> were being deleted off of some of the uh, top platforms. And many people had spent years developing their digital presence on those platforms. And uh, literally overnight, they got algorithm out. <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, you know, they're there uh, uh, yesterday and gone today. And so what we really want to do at Holonis is to be a company that keeps creating algorithms that are not just in our self-interest, but in the interest of the population and the interest of humanity, if you will. I think the power of the Internet really needs leaders to utilize technology where we can be trusted. And transparency and trust is going to be currency on the internet in the future. And so I, I, I believe that to support uh, users and to enhance them along the journey is probably the most powerful thing we can do. Yeah, that's um, amen to that. And it's uh, it's interesting. What did you say again? You said we're either going to be victims of algorithms or empowered by them empowered i think um i'm gonna let you write that article but you're you, i've been loving following your latest articles on Helanus, but i think that's a i think that's a blog waiting to happen right there so yeah no absolutely and you know i think the uh thing that you and i have in common uh and the reason i i'm really enjoying this interview is we have decades of experience uh, and not only in life but also on the internet and technology and what social media and commerce and data is going to mean to the future. Now, here's where everything connects again. It's going to connect in an algorithm. Yeah. So you have to start paying attention to algorithms and environment. Are you playing? Our algorithm and empowerment is one humanity. And if we ever alter from that, then we're putting our self-interest above the interest of society at large. So. Our whole goal is to empower people. And, you know, I really love entrepreneurs. I really love people that take control of their own careers. You know, it's, it's a very dangerous and frightening world out there when you can't make a living. And all of a sudden you can't pay bills. You know, our nation has a lot of poverty in it. It's really crazy in the 21st century that the strongest, uh, most powerful country in the world has so many homeless people and so many people that have not been able to re-pivot after the, the, uh, the recession and actually make a living. And so you have a lot of homeless in America. You know, one out of 10 college students will go homeless during their college career. I mean, isn't that quite remarkable? So I'm here in San Diego and, uh, and downtown, and I can't walk 10 feet outside this building with homeless people all over the place. It's the same in San Francisco, LA, New York, everywhere you go. Uh, these, these individuals, by some circumstance in life, couldn't make an income. And so now all of a sudden, you know, they're homeless. Uh, th these are terrible things. And I think we need to, you know, take a global look at really what is going on in our economy and how do you empower people. And so the, the millennials and the Gen Zers are responsible for the future, but they're inheriting it from us. And so what are we leaving them? Uh, it, we, we're leaving them an economy that I understand through a lot of analysts are saying this is gonna be the first generation that lives a less quality of life than the prior generation. Well, that means we're not passing the torch along very well. So I think the world needs leadership to empower the next generation. And the internet is one of those places that it enables people to make an income if they know how to utilize it. 
And it all starts with branding. And if you can brand and create a tribe, a network that people like you, trust you, and they see you on the internet every day, reaching out to them, inspiring them, offering them advice, uh, products, services, goods. If you're trusted, you're going to be able to build a business and you're going to be able to transact on the internet. But it, you know, it's trust first. <laughs> Without that, you're, you're, you're gambling. And then furthermore, I think trust and transparency just unleashes commerce. Because when you trust people, you're going to buy stuff and you're going to ask them things. And the next thing you know, your tribe becomes your search engine because you're going to start asking people that you're re related to through your network. Well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And then that's authenticity. And so what that does is it gives you a sense of I'm making a good decision. Do I, what doctor do I pick? You know, what goods do I buy? These things all lead to commerce. It's, everything is connected. Yeah, amen. You just described uh, Social Jack's entire methodology, so I want to tell you how much I appreciate that. <laughs> that's, why we, that's why we are in alignment, and it's actually, I have to tell you, Dean, it's a pure joy to be on your show, because anything that I have that I can offer to others, I'm all about. Yeah, you are. You're a very giving soul. So I appreciate you for that, Richard. And can you believe we're already at the top of the hour? Look how fast that went. It's like uh, we could probably do three more of these and not get through all the content, right? Well, we um, set this up in a bar. We can have drinks and close the bar down for conversation. Yeah, right. Barstool Social, we'll call it. I think there's bar to, Barstool Sports is already out there. They have their own uh, digital channel. But um, all right. So this is when we invite uh, Kate and Jackson back in the audience. Uh, we want the audience to chime in. And, and Richard has inspired us and mentioned a lot of things, um, uh, some things that I've even uh, picked up even more on, uh, which we appreciate. But remember, um, the way that you can be an influencer and a thought leader, and this is speaking to the audience, is to take something that you learned from Richard and, and how he's built uh, Halanus and this amazing platform and the spirit of what he's doing in our world and our community and, and teach that to somebody else and have that conversation. So like he said, we're helping one another uh, and empowering one another. And that really makes you an influencer and a thought leader. So, uh, so Kate, what did you get from, uh, from this time with Richard? I love that, um, you know, Halanis is just doing things a little bit differently and they're using their digital responsibility. Um, it's something that we talk about a lot with digital citizenship, but it's just like, okay, you have this influence, you've done all of these things, you've built this brand for yourself and how can you better serve your customers and stay true to your brand? And I think that Richard's understanding of a lot of different industries and leadership really helps him affect, really has helped him effectively build this platform. And I'm just so looking forward to the people using Halanis for good because um, I'm a huge advocate of people using their influence for good. That's beautiful. Jackson, how about you? Yeah. So, I mean, any time that I get to, you know, listen to uh, Richard you know, shed, <laughs> shed just a little bit of intelligence on me, that's, you know, great. Um, but I think, you know, like piggybacking off of what Kate said is, you know, with Halanis, it's, it's, you know, something that is different. It's something that's so much different. Whereas, you know, it was designed for the 21st century influencers. It was designed for, you know, them, it was a, designed to give them a, a platform where that was what it was dedicated to. Because you have uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram that were all there, you know, when, you know, social networks started. And then eventually, you know, they adapted to the influence, you know, and having it tailored a little bit to influencers, but it was never designed specifically for that. And I think that's what the coolest part about it is. And listening to Richard talk about it and, you know, just, you know, you can tell this is something he's very passionate about. And, you know, it's just, it's great to have technology like that or, you know, a platform like that dedicated to influencers as opposed to one that was just adapted to include them. Uh, that's interesting. I haven't heard that perspective before. So, so Richard, based on uh, the feedback that you've uh, just heard, any final uh, comments? 
Yeah, well, you know, I really love uh, listening to uh, the millennials, like the two people you said speak there. <laughs> I, I love that because they totally get it. It's their generation. This is the generation that's going to carry on, right? And so especially um, a generation that grows up in America that's always been, you know, a beacon of for entrepreneurs. And, you know, we're, we're a country that invents and creates goods, products, and services. And if we don't lose our way, we can still be a beacon of light uh, to the global community. Because I don't think it's uh, where you're just, you know, a citizen of one country. We're citizens of the world today. Right. So, you know, it, it, it's just, it's inspiring to me to just listen to Jackson and, 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 you know, your your perspective on the internet because anything we can do to empower this generation, I think politically, economically, environmentally, um, this is just a great opportunity and time in the world where we're all focused on sometimes all the problems. Let's focus on all the good stuff. You know, let's focus on instead of the one, two, three, four, five percent of bad stuff, let's concentrate on the 95 percent of good stuff. And <laughs> right. So uh, I guess in summary, um, I'm yours. Anytime you need me for anything, I'm open to it. And uh, I would really love uh, to share anything we can with your audience anytime. So thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate that. And Edith is representing the other generations, as she states uh, online here. I envision Halan is helping those of us who whose passion is writing, uh, getting more traction as we market and build our brand. I also like it as for people of all ages who want to continue earning income and providing a service. So there you go. You have just inspired all generations in one fell swoop. So congratulations. Uh, I don't. I think as we all evolve, there's probably nothing more important to know that the most powerful thing in the world is to serve others. So we should yep. think about that because that's what evolution's about. So that's you. right. Well, thank you again as well, uh, uh, Richard. We're going to send out all your links. We'll give everybody those links. Uh, we know that you have your own uh, personal amazing website on Halanis. We'll send that out to everybody. I encourage everybody to sign up and, and check out the platform as well as uh, connect to Richard on uh, LinkedIn. Um, he has an amazing profile and uh, it, it has his whole background on there. So uh, Jackson, we have a couple of winners from today's program. Yeah, so today our uh, winners on Zoom is uh, Bill Haas. <clears throat> and then our uh, winner on Facebook is uh, Nicole Jovasevich. Oh, I nice. I correctly, I believe. I <laughs> it's, always, right. it's always a guess. I'm sorry if I butchered that. So thank All you. All right, remember, uh, yeah, remember to our winners, your job is to actually take somebody for coffee and teach them what you learned from Richard. And, and about his mission in the world and the mission of Halanis and make sure that you inspire and you become a thought leader in your community. And that is to all of you out there. So again, thank you so much for checking in and listening to the program. Uh, we hope you learned as much as we did and you are the influencer of the future. So go out there and influence the world. And from all of us here at Social Jack headquarters and from Richard in San Diego at Halanis headquarters, uh, we will see you all online. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Influence Factory podcast. We welcome feedback and suggestions. You can provide these by visiting our website at www.myinfluencefactory.com. And if you are interested in Social Jack's 90 Days to Influence program, you can simply go to 90daystobusinessinfluence.com and simply ask for the next steps. While our program airs regularly on Zoom webcasts and Facebook Live on Wednesdays at noon central, we invite you to download episodes on your favorite channel, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, and who knows where else in the future. We will also provide occasional on-location live streams with special guests that we will announce in our community Facebook group, Business Influencer Alliance, as well as on all Social Jack channels. Our mission is to help you build your digital business influence, 
With this podcast, as well as inspire, educate, and entertain those who are hungry to collaborate in a cool place with cool business professionals just like you.